thank you, thank you, Greg. Um, so, uh, if, sorry, how to how to advance the screen? You have the arrow buttons in the bottom there. You can advance with. All right, thank you. Um, so essentially, it, uh, my presentation is going to be about new way of extracting water on the surface uh, of the moon. Um, concerning water markets, uh, there are quite a few. First, um, it's fuel, so it's a consumable. So this is essentially a sustainable market. Then, for uh, for water and human uh, water for human consumption, uh, since 90 percent, 95 percent of water is going to be recycled, I wouldn't say this is a super sustainable uh, market for mining more water. And same thing goes with radiation protection. Once we fill up um, uh, protective uh, layers, there is no need for water anymore. So fuel, um, a lux, a hydrogen is probably the only sustainable market for uh, extracting water on a for a commercial market. Um, how would you mine water ice? Well, in order to learn about water ice mining, we've been going to the Arctic and Antarctic, where you have water ice present pretty much uh, every every season. Uh, so let's start with the Arctic, um, Devon Island Arctic. Um, initially, what we did uh, on this side, uh, ice is a, a permafrost, the water ice came from a liquid water. So as it percolated down the low permafrost layer, it essentially froze, forming the permafrost. It's easy to, to dig through the first maybe half a meter through this dry, dry is regular. But once you get to the permafrosted layer, uh, this icy layer it essentially becomes as hard as concrete. We try it uh, to go uh, to dig it out using pick, but it's essentially like using pick to try to go through the through the pavement. Uh, it's uh, the slow uh, the progress is really slow. Um, however, if you if you deploy drills of various diameters and so on in exactly the same area. Penetration rate is incredibly fast. In fact, uh, you can you can predict penetration rate as a function of diameter. So um, I'm trying to point the arrow. Um, you can you can see. I don't see if you can see the mouse, but uh, uh, on the graph top right hand side, uh, there is well defined penetration rate as a function of this diameter. If you go to Antarctica, the the situation is slightly different. Um, in Antarctic dry valleys, uh, ice and uh, ice cemented ground is essentially vapor. It came from vapor deposited ice. So this is something that we may see, well, we probably see on a on a on a moon. Same thing: water molecules percolate down into permafrost, and then uh, they bind into the ground, form, forming a, a very hard formation. Uh, however, situation is very similar to what we found in the Arctic. This ice cemented ground is again as hard as concrete. It's very difficult to dig into it. However, if you drill into it, it's actually pretty easy. Our icebreaker drill, as uh, shown in this picture, uh, drilled down to one meter in just under an hour, required 70 watts of power and 70 newton preload. So entire energy required to drill down was just shy of 60 watt hours. Um, the drill has a, a, bit, a temperature sensor. Uh, to measure temperature of a bed and in term, and, uh, and the, by measuring the temperature, we have some idea about formation temperature during drilling. Um, so the maximum temperature was minus five degrees centigrade uh, in the ground with the initial ground temperature of minus 19. So during penetration rate, the temperature had a bit only increased by 14 degrees. I know there is a lot of worries about losing volatiles during drilling uh, at the polar regions on the moon. However, this is uh, this shouldn't be the case where the rotary percussive drilling in our case is super efficient. Um, as a matter of fact, when you when you look at the insert, uh, this part of it flows down from the auger uh, tube. This is icy, icy soil. Uh, it doesn't stick like uh, we've seen at the Mars Phoenix landing site. Uh, this icy soil behaves more like sand. Uh, so if you keep everything very cold, uh, it behaves uh, you know, as particulates. You can transfer it very easily. Does it stick? 
We did also a few tests in a lab in GSU-1A at minus 20 degrees centigrade. GSU-1A, as you know, is a lunar, lunar analog simulant. We use percussive digger. Uh, it's sort of like a jackhammer, but it has a, it has a scoop. In this particular case, it was a surveyor science scoop. Um, that we used 4.5 joules per blow at 1,800 blows per minute. And we applied up to 3,000 newtons. And you can see the scoop barely penetrated into this, into this soil. It, it was only at minus 20 centigrade. If you, if you have soil at minus 200 centigrade, it's going to be at least you know, two, three times uh, stronger. So you won't be able to penetrate that deep. If you, however, use rotary percussive drill into exactly the same formation, it penetrates very quickly in matters of seconds. So what we learned is that if you want to uh, drill into icy formation, and in this case, we assume that ice is actually going to bind with the soil and form this uh, concrete-like structure. So this is a worst-case scenario. You cannot go with the, with the scooping devices, with the backhoe devices. You have to go with the rotary percussive drill systems. Even rotary systems will have a hard time to, to dig into it. So uh, from this onwards, we decided to build our drill, uh, our water extraction system around the auger drill. And there are two approaches. The first one is uh, bring the reactor to the IC regularly. Uh, so you have two steps, mine process in situ, uh, dump uh, the dry regolith and uh, you know extract water and keep the water. Another uh, approach is to bring IC regolith to the reactor. In this case, we mine, we transport the, the, our peat stock to the processing plant, and we do all the processing. And obviously, this takes uh, much more time. So we decided to pursue the first uh, first of the approaches. It's a, it's a rubber based um, system. Um, it has a, this is traditional uh, you know, six uh, wheel uh, a, a, a rubber system with the ASRG sitting at the back. In the middle, you have deep fluted auger with a sleeve. Uh, initially, when you get to the uh, to the side, the, the arrow the arrow. Um, you preload the auger with a casing around it against the ground, forming a seal. Uh, you lower the auger. You actually pull half a meter to a meter down. Then you retract deep fluted auger with the icy soil sitting on the fluids. Moving to step number five, um, you once everything is retracted, you drive maybe a foot further and that you deploy uh, auger with this casing. The casing essentially, when it's preloaded against the ground, forms a leaky seal. Um, so there is no need for having additional device for actually um, a, a closing off the, this casing around the, around the auger. The heat generated by SRG is piped into the auger, and the, the, the icy soil sublimes away is captured on a cold finger, and the uh, dry regolith is left behind on a fluid. In the last step, step number seven, the casing around the auger is lifted up, and the auger is spanned at a very high speed, and the dry soil is dumped on a, on a surface. And the rubber moves to the next, uh, next position where we drill another hole. So it's essentially a um, you know, step-by-step process where you drill, um, retract uh, the auger, uh, uh, extract the water, you leave a dry soil in situ, and, uh, and so on, and you move to the, to the next uh, to the next spot. There are a few other options to, uh, to do extraction of water in situ. One of them is essentially to drill down and uh, heat up the subsurface soil and the uh, uh, you know, volatiles as it comes out. Um, Unfortunately, uh, there's a few problems with that. Firstly, you're going to lose a lot of heat uh, through, the, uh, through the soil, this icy soil. Through the, you're going to end up essentially warming up the uh, surface of the, and subsurface of the moon. And also, what is very unstable, uh, it's going to form this icy layer, and uh, it could potentially refreeze on a fluid and then a borehole. 
so you won't be able to pull the drill out of the hole. So this is a very risky approach, very energy intensive, so we decided not to pursue it. Going back to um, our preferred option, we perform a number of lab experiments. So this is experimental setup. It includes a deep fluted organ uh, that is pressed against the soil inside the, uh, inside the vacuum chamber. And we have a, a valves and a sensors going and a, and a tubing going into the uh, canister with a cold finger. This is a picture of the actual setup inside the vacuum chamber. Um, on the on the bottom right hand side, you have an auger, deep fluted auger with a reactor. Uh, you have these pipes on the left hand side, this clear piping. Uh, this is where vapor comes off and is uh, captured in the cold trap. And then on the right hand side, all these all these wires are going into pressure and temperature sensors. You have 90 seconds. Thank you. Uh, th this shows essentially progression of a vaporization or sublimation inside the inside the reactor. Uh, this is this shows uh, the middle picture shows before when ice is, is icy soil was at six to twelve percent weight percent water. On the right hand side, this is after reaction. On the left hand side, it's water extracted from a from a reactor. We have ninety percent water extraction with energy efficiency of eighty percent. This was done in a, in a vacuum chamber. Uh, one thing to note is uh, we are measuring soil temperature. Uh, and the moment soil is dry, the soil temperature starts increasing because the heat all of a sudden is not going anymore to, uh, to sublime water vapor. Um, it's, uh, or icy water is essentially used to heat up the soil. So this cutoff point uh, of the soil temperature, when soil temperature starts increasing, tells you that there is no more water in the soil. So in conclude, uh, water extraction efficiency 90%, energy efficiency 80%. Uh, we can change the uh, duration and power of a, uh, of a heating cycle to, uh, to improve efficiency. Um, and uh, at the bottom, so a uh, soil can contain corrosive or toxic substances, um, which can be dangerous to human consumption and corrode pipes and so on. Subliming and recondensing ensures that clean, water is clean, so less likely to corrode um, your system. In a, a, we also performed a key study, a single reactor, 30 centimeter diameter, one meter long, uh, with five, when digging into five weight percent of water, with 50 percent of water recovery, can recover 100 kilograms in two days. So it's a pretty efficient process. Um, the work was funded by NASA SBIR program. We'd like to acknowledge Jerry Sanders and Lara Orishin from NASA Johnson and Rob Mueller from Kennedy. And a lot of this work has been published in uh, some of these books about drilling. Uh, there is a book about Mars Prospective Energy and Material Resources, uh, same book about dealing with Moon, and the asteroid book is coming out pretty soon. Um, thanks very much. Thank you, Chris. So Chris, I have a, a quick question for you. Are you uh, giving this presentation from Lunabotics in uh, Florida? Uh, no, I couldn't go. Um, Jack, uh, another guy from Honeybee actually went to Lunabotics, but I heard it's pretty exciting this year. A lot of teams. Yeah, yeah. So for those who aren't aware, there's a, an annual competition that takes place in, in uh, Florida um, involving uh, various Lunar-related uh, challenges and prizes are, are awarded to uh, university teams. It's uh, quite exciting, and I think perhaps related to some of the things that we're interested in here. Um, I wanted to mention quickly that the uh, first day talks are now on the uh, website. Um, our webmaster is working to get the uh, second and third day talks up. Um, so uh, for those of you who missed a talk or two, um, please uh, go to the website. So let's see. Um, are there questions? OK, so yeah, Larry, OK, Larry um, Pianizek has the question, what is the cycle time? Since the auger is heated to drive the water out of the regolith, does the auger have to cool down before you can drill again? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good uh, question. 
the auger, because the at zero degrees centigrade, the centigrade auger is the salt sublimes away, auger is also at around zero degrees centigrade. Um, so you don't you don't really have to wait that long to to go and proceed with uh, with drilling. Okay, thanks. Um, and then uh, Carol Stoker, someone else with a lot of drilling experience, uh, says, have you considered trying this recondensing cleaning process with perchlorate-laced ice? No, we haven't done it, Carol. Uh, it, maybe this is the next step that, that we should do if we, if we target Martian uh, polar ice. Okay, very good. I don't see uh, any other questions, so uh, so 